everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn how to keep your Epson printer working and printing perfectly. So I'm going to teach you how I fix a clogged printer, which is particularly helpful for those of us who have sublimation ink in our printers as it does tend to clog easier. Are you ready to make a project, but your design is printing wrong? <laughs> So frustrating, right? Now there are a few things to check, but it could be a clog in the ink system, which can happen pretty easily. Sorry, that's unfortunately to say. I've used dozens of Epson printers over the years, and even my Epson F170 sublimation printer has clogged before. But don't worry, I'll show you how to get your prints back to beautiful. First, it's important to know that a clog does not mean that your printer is broken. It just needs a little help and extra attention in the future. So Epson makes a bunch of different tank printers. In most of them, the ink is held in tank reservoirs by color. So black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. The printer combines the colors to make your design. When you print a design, the machine pulls the different ink colors through tubes. Sometimes a little air can get stuck in the tubes and cause issues similar to clogs, so we'll address them today too. Then the ink goes into print heads with nozzles. The nozzles are usually where a clog can form because they're very, very small and ink can dry in them if the printer isn't used often. This is especially true of sublimation ink, so we'll talk about that in this video too. Once enough of your nozzles clog, the color won't show up correctly on your design. Even though it's frustrating that the nozzles are tiny enough to clog, they're very important in creating the beautiful, blended, vibrant colors we all love. So I'm gonna show you how to work through unclogging your Epson printer and ways to keep it healthy afterwards so you don't have to go through this again. I'm demonstrating everything on an Epson EcoTank 2800, which has control buttons. Your printer may have different controls or slightly different words on some screens, but most Epson tank printers are similar. Use my steps as a guidance, but it's a good idea to review your printer's user guide if you're unfamiliar with navigating the menus and the settings. Make sure it has ink and that you have some to add if you need to run the more involved cleaning steps that we'll cover later in this video. You'll also need some plain printer paper to print several test sheets, a pen to keep track of them, and some time. If your printer has a significant clog, it can take several days of printing, cleaning, and letting the machine rest to safely get it back to normal, just so you're prepared for that. And what will we be printing to fix everything up? I'll show you a few test prints using my Subliflower for my free library. But you can use the design you're working on, of course. I have links to this file in the related blog post over at jennifermaker.com 588. That's also where to find the free printer purge files that I made for you. These will make those printer nozzles work hard and they make it easy to see when a clog finally breaks through. I'll show you where to get them in my free library when we get to that step too. I'll print the PDF files from my desktop computer using the free version of Adobe Reader, but you can use any program you prefer for printing. And if you want to help avoid clogs in the future without all of this extra work, stay tuned to the last step for more details. Now, this isn't my usual style of tutorial video, and like I said, the process might take a while. So you might wanna watch it through once or even twice to get an overview of the steps. Look at your printed examples to take some notes on what you think is happening, and then start at the beginning with me. My goal and hope is that the early steps will work so you can avoid the heavy duty cleaning processes later on. Because they take a lot of ink, time and can wear your printer out faster. So whatever you do, don't jump ahead <laughs> with your own printer. I want to get you back to printing with the least amount of frustration possible. So take your time and don't stress out. If you're on a time crunch with a project due, and I totally get that, uh, try the first few steps. But it might save you stress to ask a friend with a printer to make a few prints for you or find someone online to order them from. Then you can get the project done and come back to fixing your own printer with a little less stress. Just remember to save this video for when you're ready. So let's get that printer working for you. Let me show you where to get my free test files and then we'll begin. 
Step one, determine your printer issue. If your designs are not printing as you expect, there are a few things to check before trying to unclog your printer. It might be a much easier fix than you think. First, does your print seem too light or too dull? This is normal with sublimation. Sublimation prints don't look exactly like the version on your computer screen either. They're usually duller, but don't worry because the heating process activates the ink and brings out the true colors. Or do you have horizontal lines running through your printed design like this? That could be what's called banding which is usually caused by selecting a too low quality, such as draft or fast or eco. And it causes your printer to lay down ink in lower amounts than you really need. To avoid this, make sure you have your print quality set to best or high. Now, some issues aren't as easy to spot until you've transferred the design, unfortunately, like these little dark spots. These spots usually mean that there's some ink on the rollers. The printer's rollers are easy to clean though. Just use a cotton swab lightly coated and rubbing alcohol on the rollers to clean them. Sometimes there may be a little air in the lines that's causing trouble, or the ink may not be settled into the tanks correctly. I've noticed this happens more often right after you filled your tanks, so if you just set up your printer, this could be the culprit. If you suspect this is happening, it's worth turning the printer off and letting it sit for 24 hours before printing a new test design, such as my Subla Flower. My Subla Flower has all the colors, so it's a helpful reference and a great test. You can get it over at jennifermaker.com slash sublaflower, and it's design number 385 in my free library. To use a Subla flower, print it out and check a spot that should be mostly blue, red, yellow, or black, instead of a mix of those colors to see how the inks are performing. If it looks correct, your printer may have just needed to rest a bit, which is awesome, right? But for example, if the blue areas are very light or even yellow in the green sections, that probably means something is wrong with the cyan blue ink or its delivery system. And that probably means a clog. There are many ways to fix clogs, so let's go through them from least to most resource heavy. Follow these steps in order. This is very important because if you can avoid running print head or power cleanings, your printer and your ink will last much longer. Step two, print a nozzle check sheet. Okay, you might not know what a nozzle is, but it's an important part of understanding your printer and how to fix it. Epson has purpose-built sublimation printers and models that are relatively easy to convert. In EcoTank printers, like my 2800 here, the ink is kept in tank reservoirs by color. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, also known as CMYK. The K stands for black. The ink is pulled up from the tank reservoirs and fed through tubes into specialized components called printheads. Each printhead contains thousands of teeny tiny holes. Those are the nozzles. The nozzles create ink droplets as small as four nanometers, so you can create high quality and high resolution images in full color. But each one of those tiny little nozzles can stop working if dried ink clogs it or some air gets stuck in the delivery line. Once enough nozzles are clogged, your prints will start missing colors. But we can fix it. All right, so first put several sheets of plain copy paper in your printer for testing and save your sublimation paper for sublimation projects. Also make sure your ink reservoirs are filled past the minimum level because if they get too low, that can cause trouble. On the printer screen, navigate to the home view. Then select maintenance and nozzle check or an option like that. On some printers, you may go to settings to find the maintenance screen. Now do not select anything that mentions cleaning because we're still gathering information. You may need to confirm your paper size and then continue to print a nozzle check sheet. 
Depending on your printer model, the screen might ask whether the lines on the sheet are complete or broken. Let the ink dry, and then let's take a look. On a correctly working printer, the nozzle check sheet has a large box with horizontal lines in black ink and smaller ones in yellow, magenta, and cyan. Each box uses just one ink color, so you can see how each is working. These lines are all unbroken and consistent, which means my other printer doesn't have any clogs. So in this case, I'd select that answer on the screen and try my project file again to see if there are other issues instead of a clog. But my clog printer sheet does have missing segments in the cyan section. If there are gaps in the line segments or faint sections like these, that means one or more of the print nozzles on your print heads is clogged. So we have some work to do. If the lines are staggered, you may have an alignment issue. See your printer's manual for steps to address that issue. Now label your nozzle check sheet so you can check your progress as you go along. Back on the printer, my prompt is, are there any segments missing? So I'll select yes. Now the printer may want to run a print head cleaning right away, but that uses quite a bit of ink in all four colors. It's especially wasteful if some colors aren't clogged. So instead, let's try a purge sheet next. Step three, print a purge sheet. First, download my free printer purge sheets at jennifermaker.com 588. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download from my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top and then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 588 and click the link to download the purge files. There are five printer purge sheets in the PDF folder, one each of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and one of all four colors with CMYK in the name. Now, why is it helpful to have these sheets with a lot of just one color? Or like four in the CMYK purge sheet? Remember, these printers push ink through nozzles for each color and they're combined on the paper. So one way to clean the nozzles, especially if there's only one color impacted, is to push a lot of ink through all of that ink's nozzles. And that's exactly what a printer purge file does. To print the purge files, which are in PDF format, I recommend you use the free version of Adobe Acrobat Reader. I've linked it at jennifermaker.com slash acrobat. You can use other software to print the PDFs, of course, but I prefer Acrobat because it's free, well-supported, and reliable. Follow the instructions to download, install, and open Adobe Acrobat Reader on your computer. Now review your nozzle check sheet to see which colors are faint or missing line segments. My problem is the cyan blue, so I'll print just the cyan blue page. Back in Adobe Reader, click the File menu and then choose Open. Navigate to the Printer Purge Sheet PDF for the color you want to fix. I'm going to use Cyan. Or if all of your colors were inconsistent, open the Purge Sheet with CMYK in the file name to print all four colors on one page and then follow along. Make sure you have the correct color open and then click File and select Print. In the Print dialog box, Make sure your sublimation printer is selected in the printer drop-down menu and that the design is set to print using color ink. Adjust the controls to your usual settings. I recommend you use the best quality options available. And then click print. Once the printed sheet has dried, label it to keep track of your progress and then look closely at it. If a lot of the solid color is consistent, this purge sheet may have done the trick and cleared the clog. If another color is having trouble, move to that ink's purge sheet and repeat the process. Once your purge sheets look good, you can go back to step two to print an updated nozzle check sheet. Add a note about what you did to improve the results from the first test in case you have a similar problem in the future. But if sections are faint like mine, they have stripes, or otherwise don't look consistently better, the clog is likely still there. So go back to Adobe Reader and print another purge sheet of the same color to see if a second run helps. 
label the second purge sheet, and check it for any changes. I recommend printing up to five purge sheets of a color to see if the clog improves because this process is easier to control and uses less ink than cleaning the print heads, which we're going to try to avoid. This purge process will push ink through all of the nozzles for each color. So if the first color still hasn't improved, you don't have to print purge sheets to check them separately. Instead, let the printer rest for 12 to 24 hours and then continue to step four. Step four, clean the printer nozzles and print heads. Before you attempt this, please know that the print head cleaning process takes a significant amount of ink, which is poured into your printer's maintenance box and soaked up in an ink pad. You can replace this box on some models, but others are pretty difficult, so it's best to avoid filling up the ink pad whenever possible. Mine isn't ready to be replaced, thankfully, but here's what a new one looks like for a similar printer so you can picture what this is and what's going on here. Once the ink pad is full, you'll need to completely replace the maintenance box before you can print again. So only try this step if nothing else worked. Make sure you have time to also stay with the printer and don't open it or turn it off while it's cleaning. Ready to forge on? Okay, first check that the ink in each color ink reservoir is still above the minimum level. If one or more reservoirs is close to the minimum level, add more ink now. Running these resource heavy processes without enough ink can damage your printer or give you unreliable results. Now navigate to the home view on your printer and select maintenance. Then select head cleaning or a similar option, but don't pick anything that says power cleaning. That's the last resort. You might need to confirm the print head cleaning and be asked to make sure that there's paper loaded. Then begin the print head cleaning process. It will take about three minutes while the ink is pushed through every nozzle and deposited into the maintenance box. Some of the buttons may flash during the cleaning and a message might appear on the screen. If it does, that's normal. Just keep an eye on the printer while it works. When the cleaning is done, a prompt to print a new nozzle check sheet might appear on the screen or it might just print automatically for you. Print the updated nozzle check sheet and see if the lines are consistent without missing segments, meaning the clogs are cleared. Remember to label the nozzle check sheet and note that you had a print head cleaning to get this result. Confirm that the print isn't missing any segments on the printer and if so, you're ready to go. Go to step six to learn more about how to avoid clogs in the future. But if the nozzle check sheet still shows some colors with fading or missing segments, the clog is still there. It's okay, though, this can take some time and experimenting. Try printing another purge sheet for the clog color. It might shake that last little clog out, but it's also just good practice to let your printer put more ink into paper before you try another print head cleaning. Repeat the process to do up to three print head cleanings. If after three rounds of print head cleanings, your nozzle check sheet still shows problems, turn the printer off, and let it sit for 12 to 24 hours. I know, it's a long time, but sometimes the ink just needs to settle in or there may be error in the lines that will come out with some rest. The next day, print a nozzle check sheet to see if there's been any improvement after the rest time. If not, print another purge sheet to try to clear the clog. If that doesn't knock that clog loose, use the same steps to run a print head cleaning to check for progress. You can try a third print head cleaning the third day if that still doesn't work. If the colors are still not consistent, continue on to step five. Step five, run a power cleaning. The last resort I recommend is running a power cleaning cycle. This takes a lot of ink and is taxing enough on your printer to possibly shorten its life. But sometimes it's the only way to get your printer working again. All right, so make sure there's several pieces of plain paper correctly loaded in the paper tray. Check that your ink tanks are at least one third full because the process can take almost that amount of ink. Yes, a third of a tank. <laughs> Running it with low levels can damage your printer, so make sure you got all the ink you need. 
See your printer's user manual for the specific instructions to start a power cleaning for your model of printer. On my Epson EcoTank 2800, it's under maintenance. Depending on the model, you may have to confirm that you want a power cleaning a few times because this really is the last resort. The power cleaning process will start and take several minutes. Stay by your printer to make sure it stays on and to respond to any prompts on the screen. Depending on your printer and situation, you may be prompted to update the machine's firmware, add more ink, or do another maintenance task during the power cleaning cycle. When the power cleaning is complete, the screen will say to let the printer rest for at least 12 hours before printing again, so turn it off to let it rest. On the next day, print a new nozzle check sheet to see if your power cleaning worked and your color lines are consistent. If they look correct, your printer is unclocked. Stay tuned for step six to help avoid future clocks. But if it's not unclogged, start back on step two to see if any of the other troubleshooting options that are less taxing than running cleaning cycles are enough to help you out. If the print quality is still not improved, turn the printer off and let it sit for 12 to 24 hours before trying another power cleaning process from the beginning. And if the quality is still not better, I'm sorry, first of all, <laughs> but I still recommend you let your printer sit for a few days and then start back at step two. Step six, how to avoid future printer clocks. Well, that was a lot of work. <laughs> so once your printer is working correctly, save yourself lots of time, resources, and frustration by not letting it get clogged again. While there are many things that may lead to a clog, your best bet to keep everything running smoothly is to print at least one sheet with all of your ink colors each week. Yes, you want to print at least once a week. If you're not making projects that often, you can set yourself a reminder to print weekly. Use your phone or a calendar, whatever works for you. Uh, I used a phone that worked well for me until I forgot one week, and that's how I encountered my first sublimation printer clog. <laughs> if you think you're going to forget too, or you just want something easier, I'm testing a weekly auto print service for members of my advanced program. In this service, your Epson Ecotake printer with Epson Connect capabilities gets a simple one-page sheet with all four colors of ink on it to keep your ink flowing, even if you're not at home to print it, even if you've forgotten to do it. It just auto-prints for you once a week. And as long as you keep your printer turned on, filled with paper, and connected to internet, your Epson Ecotank prints this sheet automatically each week. And yes, there are ways that you can automate this yourself for sure, but I thought I'd see if I could make it easier for you by setting it up for you. This idea is just in testing, but so far our tests are working great and our studio printers are getting one simple sheet with a little ink of each color and they're staying unclogged. So it's really awesome. If you're interested in my advanced auto print service, check out my advanced program at jennifermaker.com slash advance. I may or may not be accepting new members into my advanced program at the time that you watch this video, but you can learn more about it and get on the waiting list. So now you know what it takes to get an Epson sublimation printer unclogged. Did anything surprise you along the way? It's crazy how much ink a power cleaning uses, and you definitely don't want to do that a bunch of times. I really hope these steps worked for you. Let me know which step shook that clog loose in the comments. This will help me, and it'll help everyone else watching this video. And remember to check out my advanced auto print tool if you don't want to do all of this again. Details on that are over at jennifermaker.com slash advance. And once your project is all printed, I would love to see it. Come on over to my Sublimation Facebook group to share your results. Your success will help other crafters see that a clog printer isn't the end of the world. It's just a learning opportunity. Join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. I'd love to have you come share your ideas and get inspired too. And if you feel you need a little bit more confidence working with your sublimation printer, I can help you. 
because that's always my goal. If you want to learn more about sublimation, come check out my sublimation startup mini course at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I start from the beginning with setup, but there is a lot to learn, even if you've been sublimating for a little while, like how to use free software to print designs. And I share all my tips on getting the best results with each press, plus tons of ideas and designs for projects you can sublimate. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace without any pressure. You'll find it all over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.